You have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I may be saying that a month from now. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God just loves people that will accept it on a gift basis. And I got through the gift of faith pretty well on Sunday night. And got over into miracles and some healing on Monday night and some healing on Monday night. But the Lord has still got me there. And I will eventually get all the nine gifts of the Spirit into your spirit that you could respect them and know them and know how they work. But the Lord is going to work around healing to teach you the gifts of the Spirit. Do you know healing? Did you know this? Healing follows all the gifts of the Spirit. I've had God to give me a word of knowledge and cause a supernatural healing. I've had God to tell me to speak in tongues and uh, cause a healing to be manifested in another country and save a person's life just because I spoke in tongues. God heals many people sometimes through a prophecy. Did you ever stop and think about that? The healing power of God follows faith. It works like twin brothers with uh, the gift of working the miracles. Jesus is a healing Savior. He's a healing Lord. And I believe the number one way that he has to get to people, to cause them to believe in him, is that his healing power flow like a river. If people don't accept it as a gift, and it's all free. And God does not want you to be ignorant of the gift, of any of the nine gifts of the Spirit, and especially the gift of healing. Uh, nearly the whole world is sick, my brother and sister. And God hates sickness. He loves people, but he hates sickness because all sickness comes from the devil. And it causes you heartaches and costs you all of your money. Many people go broke because of diseases. Well, God don't want you to go broke. Because God don't want you to keep a disease. He wants you to get rid of it. How do I get rid of it? You come to Jesus, my brother and sister. He is the healer. And I want you to believe that. If I can talk you into believing it, he'll become your healer. Real quick like. Right now is faith. And the Lord wants to do it now. The 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the first verse. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Let me change that word tonight. Now concerning healing, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Every church in the world and every human being on the face of the earth that's ignorant where healing is concerned God does not want you to remain in that state of mind. He wants you to be set free from that kind of thinking. That kind of thinking is totally from the devil. Everything that God has for you and gives it to you all free, the devil just loves to bombard your mind and get you to think some other way. Well, God doesn't want you thinking some other way. He wants you to know that it's all free for you. And Jesus paid the price for the abundant life. That you can have anything you want and it's free. Healing is for you. Now concerning healing, my brother, speaking to all the churches, God says, my brother, concerning healing, I don't want you to be ignorant. That means knowing him as your own personal healer. Refusing to be ignorant. Keep your spirit and keep your mind open to the truth. And the truth is that Jesus loves you and he wants to heal you. But you have to come to him. I can prove it to you from the New Testament if I had time. And I probably will in the next few weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
that nowhere in the New Testament can you show me where Jesus ever refused to heal anybody that came to him and asked for it and wanted it and had an air and a spirit and a thinking mind of expectancy and a hungry and thirsty after healing. Nowhere in the gospel can you show me that Jesus turned anybody away. He will not refuse you even though maybe you've never been taught and know very little about it. It doesn't make any difference. If you'll come to Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ will heal you through your ignorance. If you'll show him that you just trust him enough to come to him and reach up to him and reach up to him, he will perform a miracle of use so fast to make your head swim. And he may make you swim long enough you fall flat on the floor. <laughs> Many times he does, you know. Just sweep you up into his presence. And a human being can only stand so much of God's holy presence. Yesterday afternoon in my hotel room, the Spirit of the Lord came and overshadowed me for about an hour. And the love of God and the Holy Spirit just rose up out of me right before service time. Blessed be God forevermore. Been blessing me ever since. He blessed me when I got here. He blessed me before I got here. He's blessing me while I'm here. I hope to God he blesses me when I leave, if I ever get to leave. <laughs> you must say, well, why can't people believe in healing? It's because the way your mind and your spirit has been trained in the past. You see? If you spend a lot of time with Jesus and watched him, you would believe that he is your healer. And when you believe that he's your healer, listen to me closely, he is. If you believe that he's your miracle worker, he is. If you believe that he'll lift you out of the wheelchair, he will. If I can talk you into believing that your crooked leg can be made straight, and I can talk you into showing faith and giving action to your faith and pressing in toward him, you'll get it so quick I won't even be able to get to you. The Lord said to me, tonight, son, will be a pressing in service, and I will touch people, thousands of them mightily. Glory to God. God forevermore. <laughs> Pressing in service. I mean, just like, the, well, just like the days of old, just like the woman with the issue of blood, pressing in toward him. Pressing in toward him. Pressing in toward him. Pressing in toward him. That means when the time comes, get up out of your seat and run to him. And run to him. And run to him. And be hungry and thirsty for your healing. Act like you want to be healed. Show God that your faith is not dead. That you want to be healed. God's been healing multitudes of them sitting out there in the seat. He may start healing you just any minute while I'm talking. But it doesn't make any difference when the time comes, even if he's healed you in your seat. Run down front, run down front and show God that you appreciate it and start thanking him for healing you and praise him for healing you and telling people he healed you. As long as you'll thank God for healing you and praising him for healing you and your testimony that Jesus healed me, you'll never lose it. But if you ever stop telling people about it, if you ever stop showing appreciation for your healing, if you ever stop it, that same disease will come back up on you again. And God doesn't want, he, he does not want that. He wants you to go forward with him. And go forward continually with him. And refuse to look back. Don't look back. Don't never look back. Don't look back. Go forward in Jesus' name. Go forward. I know the first time I, I, uh, I went to Jerusalem. I was going to speak the next day. The full gospel businessman had booked me to be a speaker and bought me a round trip plane ticket and got me a suite of rooms in the Diplomat Hotel in Jerusalem. 
And I went with them in their first convention in Jerusalem. First time I'd ever been to Jerusalem. Three o'clock in the morning, the first night I ever slept in Jerusalem in my life. God woke me up at three o'clock in the morning. And I heard the little sweet, still voice, so precious. The voice was so precious. It was saying to me, so sweet, so sweet, and so kind. Get up and pray. Get up and pray. Get up and pray. Get up and pray. Get up and pray, son. Get up and pray. Get up and pray. I looked at the clock. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, uh, Jesus, I think you want me to get up and pray. <laughs> so I just got out of the bed and went out in the living room, part of the suite that they had for me. There's a little table, a coffee table-like thing in the living room. And I had no earthly idea what he wanted me to pray about. So when in doubt what to pray about, the Bible says pray in the Spirit when you know not what to pray for or pray about. When you don't know what you're doing, pray in the Spirit. We know nothing about nothing. Let the Spirit of God pray through you. He knows everything about everything. Let the Spirit of God pray through you. So I just knelt down by the coffee table and began to pray in the Spirit. And I kept on praying for about 30, 45 minutes. And just all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the room was just filled with God's holy presence. Like the altar will be tonight. The whole room was just filled with God's holy presence as quick as you could bat your eye. And I couldn't stand it. And I broke and began to weep and weep and weep and I wept and I wept and I wept to a whelp and a whelp until uh, I was delivered from myself. <laughs> what does that mean? That means until you get in God's holy presence is strong that your mind lays quiet. And believe me, most human beings' mind needs to lay quiet. so God can get heaven's blessing to you and teach you how to get heaven's blessing. It's all free. It's not hard. Jesus said, why don't you take time to learn of me? If you're not receiving what heaven has for you, why don't you take time to learn of me? You'll find that I'm meek and lowly and I'm easy to understand. And you'll find rest unto your souls. That is, if you'll learn of me. Not per se religion. But Jesus said, I sure wish you'd learn of me. All the blessings you'll ever need is in me. Everything that pertains to the abundant life, Jesus said, is in me. There is no name whereby you can even enter into heaven except through the name of Jesus. God Almighty, the God of all the universe said, if any human being ever tries to get to heaven except through his son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ, I will consider him as a thief and a robber and you're not going to get anything. So if you thank God for hospitals and thank God for doctors and nurses and medicine, but if you choose that over Jesus all the time, that's all you'll ever get. And you'll never know about the healing power of God and the miracle working power of the Lord Jesus Christ if you don't give him a chance. And you have to go somewhere where it's going on. 
you cannot get healed where they don't have healing services. God does not usually, as a normal thing, heal people sitting in the living room. Sometimes he will through a TV screen if something's going on. But you have to go somewhere where something's happening. You have to go someplace where Jesus is doing it in order for you to receive it. You just can't do it. You've got to go where it's happening, my brother and sister. Thank God it's happening here. There's no question about that part. It's happening to me. Glory to God. I'm getting the blessing myself. I'm getting the overflow myself. I've spent about a month and a half over in Honolulu speaking at conventions and churches and praying. And I told God this past December and January, I said, God, any kind of property or any kind of money or any kind of CDs or anything else, Lord, that I have in my name, if you want them, you can have them. Any money that's in any of the ministries that you've given me, you can have it. I'll do anything that you tell me to do with it. Lord, I want to offer you myself. And Jesus, if you have any human being anywhere in the world, Paris, Germany, any place, that just needs to be healed, I said, Lord, 14 years ago on that cold night in Pennsylvania at Christmas time, when you put your healing power in my hands, in that holiday and ballroom, at that Christmas banquet, I said, Jesus has been in there ever since, and I'll go lay my hands on anybody you tell me to, and I'll buy my own plane ticket and go. All I want to do, Jesus, is just do what you want me to do. As long as you want me to do it, then I want to come to heaven and be with you for all eternity. I'm not interested in doing my own thing. I just want to do what you want me to do, Jesus. I, I don't want to do anything else except what you want me to do. And I want to do it in the way that you want me to do it. I don't want to dream up a bunch of ideas and a bunch of ministries that you're not in. I'm not interested in that, God. I just want to offer you myself. And anything that I have or own is yours. And so that's all I've got. I don't have anything else, Jesus. And so if there's any way that you want to use me, just feel free. Missions, one person, TV or anything else, it just don't make any difference to me. Just go ahead and use me. I'm available. And I didn't know that he's going to do this, but I guess he decided to do it. Well, he'll always decide to do something if you'll give yourself to him. And he'll do it through you. He required me to work with little poor children and pass out tracts for seven years. I got no offerings for seven years, the first seven years. I got no love gifts the first seven years I was in the ministry. I worked my own money out and paid my own way. Didn't receive a dollar as far as I know. I wasn't looking for a dollar. I didn't want a dollar. I wouldn't even take offerings when people started giving them to me. But I had a meeting then with the, uh, some of them got half offended because I wouldn't take gifts from them. And uh, I had a meeting with the First Baptist pastor and a Pentecostal preacher. I says, what do I want to do? These people want to give me money for coming and teaching the gospel to them and tell them about Jesus. They want to give me money. They take up love offerings for me. They want to give me gifts. I said, I don't want no gifts. But Brother Norville, you'll have to take it. You'll have to take it. The Lord has called you. And you'll have to take it. If you don't take it, you'll knock them out of a blessing. And uh, if they want to give it to you. I said, but sometimes these sweet little old ladies come up to me. Precious little old ladies come up to me, and they, they're probably on welfare, and they want to give me $2, and they stick $2 in my pocket. And I said, I feel like a crook. I said, I don't, what am I supposed to do? Oh, no, brother, no, but you don't have to take it, because the Lord's told them to do that, and you don't have to take it. I tell you, Pentecostal preachers and First Baptists can tell you about taking offerings and money. <laughs> That's what they told me. I says, well, I don't want to get in trouble with God. And I don't want to knock people out of a blessing. So I've been taking everything ever since then. You want to give me something? <laughs> so I said, Lord, bless me so much. One time in my life, I says, God, what am I going to do with all these blessings? He said, you're going to use it for me, or I'm going to take it away from you. I said, oh, is that the way it is? He said, that's the way it is. It flows from one to another. Blessings flow from one to another. Blessed be God forever. 
And so, all of a sudden, when I broke in the presence of God, and I just began to pray and worship the Lord and worship the Lord, all of a sudden, when I was melted, <laughs> and I just got out of the natural state of mind, and I got into the presence of God so strong, the word of the Lord come unto me saying, it's called a word of knowledge. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit. It's one of the revelation gifts of the Spirit. God can give you a word of knowledge and give you one statement and make you rich financially. He can tell you where to go to and lead you by the Spirit and get you healed and give you a miracle. He also can tell you exactly what's going on in the land that you're in. I've been in cities when he showed me the spirit, the demon that controlled that city. He had said, son, bind the thing up in my name. Pray and bind it up in my name. Pray. Bind it up in my name. Bind it up. You're here. Pray. Bind it up in my name. If you will, it won't, even though you don't live here, it'll help. It can't do as much work. You know, I've trained a governor's office in Indiana one time to do that. The right-hand man of the governor of Indiana. The governor of Indiana invited Demas Shikari and myself one time to come to his private chapel and have a service for him. So we went. Did you ever go someplace and have a service for two people? The governor and his bodyguard and his helper. So we got up, oh, sang songs and prayed and testimonies and preached to two people. <laughs> the governor and his bodyguard, his helper. And so I, I taught him what to do, and I said, I got him baptized in the Holy Spirit. He wrote me a letter on governor stationery. He says, you know, I never did. I never realized. I want to thank you, Mr. Hayes, for being so influential to me, to to lead me, to help me uh, know that these things are free. Uh, I have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I don't believe that the world knows anything about this. <laughs> I think you need to pray that other people will find it like I have. I didn't even know this kind of blessing was available for people. And after that, he started the governor's right-hand man started a prayer meeting in Indianapolis, Indiana. He would pray and get people together and make intercession every Tuesday night from 7 to 11. And uh, I go back about a year later, he sent somebody after me to pick me up, to bring me up to the Capitol building to have lunch with him. So I did, and he's sitting there having lunch. He said, you know, since you, since I came that night and saw you and since you came to the governor's office and had a service and since you taught me and coached me and led me and showed me what to do, he said, I picked up real quick that the power was in praying in the spirit. And I've been having a prayer meeting every Tuesday night from 7 o'clock at night to 11 o'clock at night. And this was just a few years ago. He said, I've kept it down. A very intelligent man. Taught a, one class a week at night time at the university. And he was the governor's right-hand man. But he said, I, I take notice of what happens around the world. He said, we've been binding the devil in Jesus' name over the city of Indianapolis. For four hours, we've been praying and asking God's blessing and binding up the devils in Indianapolis. And he said, this is the only major city in America that had a decrease in crime this year. Some other cities was raised in crime as far as 30%, 25%, 20%, 22%. He said Indianapolis and Indiana had a 17% decrease in crime this year. The only major city that had a decrease, and it was 17%. Well, when you have hundreds and hundreds of crimes, that's, that's a good decrease the first year. Well, if you'd pray in the Spirit... 
and let the Spirit of God have His way, uh, next year you'd probably have a 15 or 20 percent decrease. And if you keep on doing it, the next year you'd probably have a little decrease. And the next year you'd probably have a little decrease. And the next year, and get more people saved, and get more crusades in town, and get, get the Spirit of God working more, working more, and keep on binding the devil, and keep on climbing heaven's blessing, and keep on and on and on. If you wouldn't give up, if the, if the church would not get lazy and give up, you could see heaven come to earth. Yeah, you could. And you must know when heaven comes to earth, when God's power meets you, you'll find out that you don't know much. I guess you've already found out you don't know how to be healed. That's the reason you're sitting there like little lambs, and I'm telling you that Jesus is your healer. And when you come into contact with Him uh, and His healing power, His divine healing power, the Lord talked to me one time about His healing power, Jesus did. And He called it divine healing power. What does that mean? That means to Jesus that His healing power is very sacred and very precious. My mother died with cancer at the age of 37. And when I prayed myself into his presence one time and he talked to me about her death, there's always a reason why your loved one died, you know. And you probably never will know the reason until you uh, pray yourself into God's presence and let him talk to you about it. My mother was probably the best Christian, or just as good a Christian, a dedicated Christian as anybody in church. And we hung a blackboard up behind the pulpit. There's a blackboard that stayed there that had letters over the top of the blackboard that said, Pray for the sick. And they kept Zona Hayes' name on there for a long time. But we buried her. I found out that blackboards don't work. I don't care how many blackboards you've got hanging around the wall. You have to give people a chance to come to Jesus. And you have to tell them that Jesus is their healer. That Jesus is their healer. That Jesus is their healer. Without shame. That Jesus is your healer. And not be ashamed. And not be ashamed in front of the whole world. The part of the gospel you're ashamed of, that's the part that God will never give to you. You can't be ashamed. God's divine healing power is very sacred to Jesus. It's a very precious thing. I mean, it goes in you and flows in you. It'll drive all diseases in you out. It can make you totally clean and totally free from diseases by just passing one time through you. It can pass one time through you and just stretch your crooked leg out. It's amazing the power that's involved in His divine healing power, and it's all free. And when you come to Him and press into Him with the right kind of attitude, he releases that power. I can't make God release healing power to you. I cannot make Jesus do that. But if I can speak to you and teach you and get your attention and get you to believe it yourself, and if I can get you to come to Jesus with sincerity, God's power will go through you so quick. It's all free. I've had the Holy Ghost to weep through me and cry through me because he couldn't heal you. You might say, the Holy Ghost couldn't heal me? Well, what do you mean by that? The Holy Ghost couldn't heal me? Not if you don't have a certain amount of respect for God's divine healing power, and if you don't believe that Jesus is your own personal healer, and if you don't believe that Jesus loves you enough to heal you and give you a miracle, if you don't believe that Jesus has the power to straighten that crooked leg out, you can have the crooked leg for 30 years. God will leave you in the state you're in. You have to show God that you believe that. You have to show Him that your faith is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to show Him that you believe that that divine healing power is for you. It doesn't make a difference if it's Gentile, Jew, Greek, or what. If you'll show God, it'll happen to you. 
You say, how does it happen to you? That's exactly what he told me in Jerusalem. After he melted me. And after me, after I was kind of removed from myself, he told me, tomorrow, son, when you get up to speak, I want you to tell these people, Jew and Gentile alike. Sometimes Gentiles are not quite as spiritual as they think they are. Because you may be like my mother was. Because the whole community knew that she was spiritual. Because she shouted in church, and she'd shout at home, and she'd pray for hours, and she loved the Lord with all of her heart. And she was a good, precious woman. Uh, but she died with cancer, which was out of God's will for any human being to die with anything. Before your time, that is. Well, why? Because the, Jesus told me the church she went to, the church she went to, Son, it was the church she went to. Never did teach her about my divine healing power. They never called me their divine healer and never taught her about my divine healing power. Never had the altars open for a divine healing service and let the people press in towards me because I am the healer. They never did. And as long as I went there, I was raised there, they never did. Everybody died there. And it don't have to be a Baptist church. It can be a Pentecostal church. It can be a Methodist church. It can be a Lutheran church. But unless you, let, unless you bring people to Jesus, the healer, they're not going to get healed. I can tell you now, they're not going to get healed. You might as well go to the hospital and take your pocketbook with you. And if you go, you will take it with you. It may be fat when you go, but when you leave, it won't be fat anymore. But... Think about it, my brother and sister. Think about it. It's all free from Jesus to you if you'll only believe it. And those that need it real bad, they're hungry and thirsty to believe it. There is hundreds and I'm sure thousands and thousands of people listening to me tonight. Been sick for years. In fact, some of them has no hope. I am telling you that there's hope for you. I am telling you that Jesus will heal you and his divine healing power will come to the screen into your body if you'll only trust him. Get in those meetings wherever you're at and let that power come in there. And if you're listening to him in a house somewhere, catch a plane, bus, uh, stagecoach, anything. <laughs> and come to Dallas, Texas. Come to this church and get down front. Get out in front and get in this altar every night, every night, every night. Make up your mind. I'm going to Dallas to get my healing. I'm going to Dallas to get my healing. <laughs> you may be sitting there tonight in your own living room with a lot of your friends. And you might say, well, I don't know a fellow as wild as he is. Well, you know one now. <laughs> and I'm telling you boldly that the Lord will heal you. You don't have to die of that disease. What are you spending all your money for? Why don't you let the Lord heal you? Well, well, what do you mean, let the Lord heal me? Let the Lord heal you, but you have to go somewhere where it's happening. When Jesus was on the top of the mountain healing people, I always remember he wasn't healing people in the valley. He was healing people on the top of the mountain. He wasn't healing people in the villages that day. He was healing people on the mountain. And about 18,000 people climbed the mountain, climbed the hill of God with diseases. And I'm sure some of them half dragging themselves, so sick and crippled and blind and demon-possessed. And nowhere in the gospel can you show me he ever turned one of them away. He never turned one of them away. Never did. The Bible says he'd heal them all. Everybody that made their way to him and came to him, he would heal all of them. Every one of them he'd heal them. 
After he had healed them, it's no wonder you've been getting reports in these churches all day long today. They've been hanging around the altars till 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Well, that's just like, that's, that's the way they're, they're supposed to be. They're supposed to act like that. They've been acting like that for 2,000 years. After the Lord Jesus would heal them on top of the mountain, they would stay with him and not even eat any food sometimes for two or three days at a time. And the disciples said, well, send them away. I can't send them away, Peter, James, and John. They'll faint in the way. They'll faint. It's too far to the villages to buy victuals, to buy food. I can't send these people away. These precious people, they came to me to get healed, and they've been healed, and they've been here with me for three days. They don't want to leave. Well, who wants to leave? I mean, I don't want to leave, and I'm the presence of God. What do I want to fool with you for? I don't want to leave. I want to be left alone. I like to be in the presence of God. Don't you like to be in the presence of God? Yeah. Oh, it feels so good to have the divine healing power of God to overshadow you and just slowly move down through your mortal body and your flesh and just dry up that skin disease. Give you perfect blood and you'll have no high blood pressure anymore. Move through your kidneys and give you perfect kidneys in Jesus' name and knock out all the pus and stuff in your kidneys and make them brand new. You'll feel like you're 16 years old. And over you girls, many times it happens in my services. Girls and women have hysterectomy. Half of your female insides cut out. If I could talk to you into trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your miracle worker, he will move through your body. I've had girls who say, and start shaking and shaking. Oh, Mother Norval, my womb is turning hot. My womb is turning hot. I've got a new one. And the Lord give them a brand new womb, and you're just like you was when you're 16 years old. Amen. You mean God does things like that? Only if you believe in His miracle work and power. You have to believe that He's a miracle worker. He is a God of creation for you. Jesus is your healer, and he's also your miracle worker. But he will literally create things for you in your body, in your body, in your body. When I came to the gifts of healing and the gift of working and miracles in this seminar, the Lord just stopped me there. I don't know how many days I'll have to stay on this. There is no telling what God, how long I'll stay on this. No telling what God wants to do across the land. No telling how long it'll go on. But uh, it'll go on for a long time, I can tell you that. That's the reason if I was you, if I was sick and been suffering, needed a miracle from God, there is nobody in your town that you know that will stand up bold and said, Jesus will heal you. If I was you, I'd borrow the money and come to Dallas. If you can't find a church somewhere, find the nearest satellite church. If you, get, if you can't borrow the money if you have to and come to Dallas. And get in here because I believe in three or four or five days. I mean, I just got it in my spirit. I believe in three or four or five days, people will be outside trying to get in. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe the sick are pouring here from all over the different parts of the world. Because you can receive healing in this church. I'm telling you, you receive healing. I wish to God every sick person in the world was in this congregation tonight so they could run down front and press into Jesus. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Press into him. Press into him. God likes pressing faith. God won't do much through nonchalant faith. Well, I don't know if the Lord will heal me. Yes, he will. If you listen to me long enough, you get to believe in it yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get to believe in it yourself. And when you believe it yourself, it's there it's for you and it's all free. Tomorrow, the Lord said to me in Jerusalem, when you get up to speak tomorrow, son, you tell these people. And this is my first night in Jerusalem. I mean, the holy city of God, where Jesus spent a lot of time where the tribe of people that God chose to let his son come to the earth to be the deliverer of the human race. And here I am, a first Baptist. Raised as first Baptist. And the Lord melted me. God can melt first Baptist, second Baptist, or third Baptist, or Methodist, or anybody else. 
When this power comes up on you and stays on you for quite a while, uh, it just don't make no difference how you've been raised. It means nothing. It means nothing to you how you've been raised. Let's it be God forever. When you speak tomorrow, tell them. Are you listening closely? Tell them, I am the living God and there is no other. Also, son, tell them, beware of false gods. <coughs> My mother did not have a false spirit inside of her. She had the Holy Spirit inside of her. But she had received all of her life incorrect information in her head concerning Jesus the healer. And when you receive it for years and years and years, and then one day, <laughs> cancer comes upon you to claim your life. To eat the flesh away off from under your bones. To turn you into a little skinny mess. Barely can breathe. You have to sit and watch your loved ones. And watch cancer sap the life of God out of a human being. Sit there and watch it. And can't do anything about it. Can't do it. Why? Because you don't know how. Because you don't get up every morning and scream to the heavens, Jesus is my healer. The healing power of God is welcome in this house. Jesus is my healer. If you do that every day, he'd heal you. He'd heal anybody. But you have to do it. You can't just think about it. And get lazy, nonchalant. You can't do it. God will not accept nonchalant faith. God does not bless lazy people or stingy people. No, he don't. I said, okay, Lord, I will. So the next day I got up and spoke. You was there, Biff. Him and his wife was there. I got up and spoke, and I spoke on, Jesus is the true and living God, and there is no other. And I warn all of you, Jew and Gentile alike, beware of false gods. And if you don't believe that Jesus is your healer, you got some thoughts mixed up in your mind. Because he is your healer. And he wants to heal you tonight. He wants to heal you anytime that you get sick. Anytime the devil comes and tries to attack you, he wants to heal you. Because his divine healing power is all free. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's given to you right now by the Holy Spirit. And he wants to heal you and give you a total miracle. Any time, and he stays ready 24 hours a day. He stays ready all the time. Are you ready? Amen. But he stays ready. You don't have to worry about God being ready. Is your faith ready? Can your mind, can you take your mind and lay it aside and just boldly in front of, right in the midst, right in the face of all of your teaching in the past, can you just boldly stand in front of the whole world and say, okay, I believe Jesus is my healer. I believe Jesus is my healer. I believe that. But can you say it with your mouth? Can you say it? You can? Well, why don't you show me then? Say it again. Say it again. God loves that. You understand that? Jesus loves it. And some of you that said that because I told you to, if I had the time and get you to say that about 200 times, you'd get to believe in it yourself. Yeah. Because when you do that, the Spirit of God starts rising up in you. He only works with truth. The Holy Spirit, and the only reason the Holy Spirit don't heal you anyway is because He can't work with false believing. He can't work with your image of God and your image of Jesus or what somebody has told you or you haven't made up your mind yet that he is your healer. He can't work with that and won't work with it. He is truth.
nothing but the truth, and he only works with the truth, and he don't work with you. Some people ask me, why don't the Holy Spirit do something for me, Brother Norval? Why don't the Holy Spirit give me a big financial blessing? Why don't the Holy Spirit stretch my crooked leg out? Why don't the Holy Spirit uh, heal me? Uh, I've been suffering for years. Why don't the Holy Spirit do this and do that? Uh, well, he wants to, but the reason he don't is because he don't agree with you. I didn't figure that would go over it. It never goes over anywhere. <laughs> but now he does agree with the Jesus on top of the mountain that healed everybody. He'll agree with that. If you'll run to Jesus and press into him, and call him your healer, and you've come to get it, and you mean business, you've come to get it. Now then, the Holy Spirit will agree with you. He agrees totally and fully with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you'll think like Mark, he'll agree with you. So they sit there and listen, and people receive from God. And the next day in that convention, when the Lord told me, he says, Now then, son, now then, since you've taught them that I am the true and living God, and there is no other. And now since you've taught them to beware of false gods and beware of false doctrines, now then I want you to teach on faith and healing tomorrow. So the next day I get up and taught on faith and healing. If you trust God, show God that you have faith in Him. Let your faith have action. Show God you have faith in Him. And at the end of the service I taught on healing. The second half, and if you believe that Jesus will heal you, uh, well, show God that you believe Jesus will heal you. If you want to be healed, I said to those Jews and Gentiles alike, get up out of your seat, come down front right now. Well, I didn't know it, but uh, uh, there's a fellow sitting on the front, and I, he just, the moment I said that, I mean the split second, I, it's amazing how well you listen when you're crippled. <coughs> It's amazing when you're dying with cancer how well you'll listen. Uh, before you were dying, you'd make fun of a thing like this. But it's amazing when you, you're laying on your deathbed and medical science looks at you when you spend all your money and says, there's no hope for you, you're going to die. And some fellow comes around like me and says, Jesus wants to heal you. He is your healer. And it springs up a little hope in you. I didn't know he was the shape he's in, but he was sitting over to my left in that ballroom at the Diplomat Motel in Jerusalem. And I said, if you want Jesus to heal you anywhere, well, get up out of your seat and come to him. Then I'm not your healer. Jesus is. Jesus is your healer. And some guy jumped up out of his seat, jumped up out of his seat right here in front. And I noticed he jumped up out of his seat, and he wobbled. He was wobbling towards the front, and he was going, he was going... He had one twisted leg. The moment he began to press in towards the rostrum like this, walked up here, began to press in, he goes, just that moment he goes, ow! Threw his hands up and fell flat of his back in the floor, let out a yell, wow! And fell flat in the floor. You remember that, Biff? Fell flat in the floor. And uh, I didn't know anything about him, you know. I'd never seen him before in my life. And he had been laying on the floor about five seconds, I guess, or maybe 10 seconds, or 15, 15 seconds. And he jumps up off of the floor, and he's totally normal. And he pulls up, he says, Ow! Oh! He says, Jesus has healed my leg, my leg! Ow! Oh! I'm normal, I'm normal, I'm normal! Lord, oh, heal my leg! <laughs> heal my leg! As he fell backwards, that twisted leg just went, and made totally normal. You know why it was? You know why I believe that Jesus did that for him? Exactly. The kind of faith that the woman with the issue of blood had in the fifth chapter of Mark. She made up her mind that Jesus was her healer, he was her provider, and he began to, she began to press in through the crowd to get to him. Well, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the New Testament church, uh, this right here is a sacred thing. 
pulpit is a sacred thing. It's what you put the Bible on. And the Bible is holy and clean and sacred and truth. And I can show you from the Old Testament and the New that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit all love the altar. They love the altar in the church where people can come and come before God in Jesus' name. Uh, this represents Him. When you come to meet Him, He meets you because Jesus is the head of the church and He loves His church. Tonight we have well over 2,000 people in this church here in Dallas, Texas. Looked like there's over 2,000 last night. Tonight there looked like there's 2,500 people here. I can tell there's a few more people here tonight than there was last night. It's been growing every night. It won't be very long until they'll be outside trying to get in. Just mark it down. I'm telling you, they'll be outside trying to get in. And we may be here a month from now. You can never tell. Here a month from now. Why? Because Jesus is ready and I am through. That's it, my brother and sister. And Jesus is your healer. Push this thing back. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. Everybody all over America, pastors, go to the front and stand behind your pulpit. All over the world, go to the front and stand behind your pulpit. Congregations begin to say, Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Say it again. Everybody all over the world, say it. Show him he is. Jesus is my healer. Yeah, say it. Jesus is my healer. Say it. Jesus is my healer. Say it. No. Let him press in, man. Let him press in. Come closely. Let him press in. Let him press in. Jesus is my healer. Begin to keep saying it, congregation. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. They're coming from hell. young man right here has been attacked with cancer in his, his body and his brain. Don't confess it for yourself out there. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, he's diagnosed as having cancer in his body and there's just not a whole lot they can do. He's just down to just pure bone. I mean, if you believe God can raise this young man up tonight. Who's the healer? Jesus. Who's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, brother. No. I curse this cancer in Jesus' name. I curse the roots of it, and I command it to die and cease being in Jesus' name. Come out of his body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power flowing through his body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty healing power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for performing a miracle for his brain. I curse that tumor, command it to die and cease being. Stop, I said, in Jesus' name. Take 
your hand off this boy's body. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now begin to confess, church. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Thank you, Lord, for your supernatural miracle working power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand up. Come on, get up. Get up in the name of Jesus. Jesus is our healer. Confess. Jesus is our healer. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the people. Look up and look around. Now look around. Son, come on, let's begin to walk for Jesus. Let's walk for Jesus. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Hug your mom. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Amen. Jesus is our healer. Now look around. Is that better? better. How much better? Jesus is our healer. Almost all the way. Keep praising God, saints. I mean, God. Some more, son. God's healed you. Jesus Come on, let's walk. God's healed you. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. He's healed. Lord, Jesus is here. Come on, let's walk some more. Come on, let's walk some more. Let's walk some more. Okay, now walk back to your mom. Tell her Jesus has healed you tonight. Just tell her. Shout it. Prophesy. Come on, saints. Let's praise God. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for healing her. In Jesus' name. I lay my hands on her. I thank you, Lord, for healing her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless you, honey. Jesus has healed you. Jesus has healed you, honey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you in the name of the Lord God forever. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that she's healed. Total miracle. I thank you, Lord, she's healed. The healing power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Laba Kassam. Hada. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus, 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 I am healed. Is better? Okay, let's go pray some more. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Any more cases over on the head or anything like that? I'm gonna go look. We're looking for crippled people. We got okay. How do I look or something? Here's a crippled lady right here. He is the floor.
right now. Let's stretch all our hands toward this camera right here. We're going to release the power of God into these churches as we go off the air. Father, you, you have turned Thank revival you, loose across America. Bless Lord, we know right now the Holy Ghost is moving by His Spirit Thank in every one of these Jesus. churches. Father, Thank we release Lord. the anointing Thank of God into these pastors, Lord, into the laying on of hands. We thank you, Lord, when they wake up in the morning, many more manifestations of miracles have already happened. We thank you, Lord, that people have been healed and didn't even know they were healed tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the beginning of the greatest revival the earth has ever had. And we speak the power of God into these churches in the name of Jesus. And all the believers said, Amen and amen. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. For healing me. I, love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I'll have no other gods before you. I will beware of false doctrines false and false gods. False Jesus, Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart, I in my heart that you are my healer. Jesus, I press in like the woman with the issue of blood. Say, Jesus, I reach up to you. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power that's flowing through me. In Jesus' name, now worship him. Praise him. As you lift your hands gently and begin to worship the Lord, lift them all up. If you want to be healed, lift your hands to Him. In fact, turn your face toward heaven. That's where the miracles come from. That's right. In Jesus' name, turn your face toward heaven so you can't even see us. Look to Him. Bob and me is going to agree and ask the Lord to release His healing and miracle work and power upon you. Bob, let's stretch both our hands and start over here. Lord, we'll agree in Jesus' name that your miracle working power and your healing power flow over this congregation, flow over this altar in Jesus' name, and float into their bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and drive out all afflictions in Jesus' name, and start a total healing and a cure in every one of their bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank God that you got it. Begin to thank God you got it. Thank you, Lord, for this man over here. miracle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for a special miracle for him. Now you in begin Jesus to press name. in for your miracle. Thank Forget you, about what's happening over here. Begin to press Jesus in for your name. miracle. Begin to do what you couldn't do. That's what you need to do. Miracle. Begin to do what you couldn't do. Thank you, Lord, for your eye, her eyesight. Thank you, Lord, for a special miracle for her eyes in Jesus' name. Blindness, go in Jesus' name. Blindness, go in Jesus' name. Darkness, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power flowing through her eyes to give her her normal eyesight. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now that every one of you look at me. Now let me teach you how to live. Not just to come to church. Not just to come to the altar. Yet a face tomorrow. And the next day. And the next day. And the next day life goes on. You need to learn how to live. In the blessings of God. Which will never depart from you every morning starting in the morning there'll be no singing in your room there'll be no preaching in your room you'll open up your eyes early in the morning God said forget not I am warning you forget not my children to give me thanks for what I do for you. In the morning, starting in the morning, when you open up your eyes and everything is quiet, don't forget. I'm warning you, don't forget. Lift your hands with me. In the morning now, and say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For healing, me. for healing me. My life belongs to you. Jesus, thank you for healing me. My life belongs to you. Help me be a soul winner. Help me get people healed. Jesus, thank you for healing me. Say, Jesus. You are my personal healer. You are my personal healer. But I thank you first of all. But I thank you first of all. Because my name. Because my name. Is written in heaven. Is written in heaven. But Jesus. Jesus. I'll never forget again. I'll never forget again. That you're my personal healer.